Marku is back and he's got a very good opponent. Let's talk about it. Hello, my name is Chris and welcome to Broken Nose Boxing's build-up video for a welterweight contest between the Albanian king, the undefeated Florian Marku, fighting former British welterweight champion Chris Rock and Roller Jenkins. Fake date, venue, promoter, broadcaster, all that information is in the video description of this video. Really quick, if you'd like to support the channel and get early access to all of my videos, check out my Patreon site. It's a fantastic way to support creators. The link is on the screen right now, and if you can spare a little bit, please consider. So Florian Marku is back, and I for one am very excited. Florian Marku is an exciting fighter, especially on Fight Week. There's a real buzz around any card that he's involved in. And he's taking on Chris Jenkins, the former British champion, Chris Jenkins. Before we go any further, let's do a quick tale of the tape. Starting with Chris Jenkins. He's got a record of 23 wins, 4 losses, 3 draws, 8 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former British and Commonwealth welterweight champion. He's 33 years old and he's from the United Kingdom. And now the Albanian king, Florian Marku. He's got a record of 10 wins, zero losses, one draw, with six wins coming by way of knockout. He is 29 years old and he is from Albania. So what do we know about Chris Jenkins? Well, it's a very, very good opponent for Marku. I would say this is probably the toughest or second toughest fight of Marku's career thus far. Jenkins is a former British and Commonwealth welterweight champion, of which he reigned briefly in 2019. He's been around for 10 years professionally and he's been involved in some exciting fights and fights against other top British welterweights. Last year he lost his British title when he was stopped against Echo Osserman. I suffered, uh, it, 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 was, it was a bad fight for, for Jenkins. He, he broke his ribs in the second round and he was stopped in the eighth round. Pretty devastating loss for, for Jenkins. After the Esselman defeat, he came back against Julius Ndongo this year, former top, very briefly former top light welterweight Julius Ndongo, and it beat him on points. Ndongo was pretty much right at the tail end of his career, and I think he'll probably have a couple more fights to make some money and then retire, but Ndongo is way past his prime. But still, on paper, you'd have to say that Julius Ndongo is Jenkins' best victory. Marku does hit hard and Marku is increasingly, he's improving in every fight and I think he was a little bit frustrated by his last performance against Luis Sieto. So I think going into this fight, he wanted to put on a good show for his fans. I think the clash of styles here is going to be nice. Jenkins is known to engage and because he's kind of getting on a bit now, I don't think he's... It's hard to know if he's still on his prime, might be right at the tail end of his prime. And going up against Marku, I think this is by far the most experienced fighter that Marku has fought against. You could say Maxim Prodan, but I'm not massively familiar with a lot of the opponents that Prodan has had, whereas I'm very familiar with a lot of the opponents that Jenkins has had over the years. So I very much like this fight, Marku versus Jenkins. And it would be nice for Marku to get a bit of stability. Marku has changed trainer once again, and since I started covering Florian Marku last year, I think he's had three trainers. And I was speaking to someone who reckons that he might have actually had five trainers since the start of his pro career. And he's been hopping in between boxer and matchroom shows. A lot of change. And he was even considering fighting at super lightweight, which is 140 pounds. He's been talking about that. There's been rumors of that for pretty much the past year, which hasn't happened yet. He's just consistently still fighting at welterweight. And with the sort of ambiguity over weight, the changing of trainers, the changing of promoters, I do think Marku needs a bit of stability. He needs to work with the same training team. I think he should work with the same promotional company and just focus on improving his boxing ability. Because Marku is incredibly popular, and chances are if you're watching this video, you know how popular Marku is. And 
he's good for boxing. He's bringing in a whole Albanian fan base, a very passionate Albanian fan base, who uh, are pretty. I mean, I can't really think of any other big Albanian boxers or boxers that are on the level of Marcus. So the fact that these new fans are coming into the sport is always a good thing in my opinion. I'd be curious to see how Marco fights. I think Marco's team, knowing that Jenkins was stopped last year in quite a big fight, they'll think that he is there for the taking. And I think Marco is going to really put the pressure on Jenkins and see if Jenkins still has the legs and still has the willpower to go up against a sort of ferocious fighter like Marco. And it's a good test for Marco as well, for, for the, the neutral fight fan to see how good is Marco. So Marco versus Jenkins, what do you think of this fight? Let me know in the comments. If you want to throw me a tip on Kofi, there's a link in the video description. It's basically just a tip jar. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'm out. Peace.